to be offended. Like, before you watch this video, mentally be prepared to be offended. Today, I'm going over all the things that I thought were cheese and what I thought was skill in NBA 2K24. When you think of 2K24 as a whole, these things stick out. These things that I'm going to cover in this video are Patty Mills and T-Mac base, screens, L2 canceling, moving meter dunks, standing meter dunks, floaters, post hooking, right stick ripping, the Jamal Murray behind the back, and lastly, the Kobe jab step. Be prepared to be offended because my opinion is probably different than most. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. Let me know what you disagree and or agree with. Let me know if I'm, like I said, let me know if I missed anything. And yeah, let's get into the video. Let's start with the Kobe jab step. As you can see in some of these clips, the defender who's a lockdown is playing behind me. In my opinion, the Kobe jab step for guards is 100% skill. This guy's playing behind me. I jab step right through him. In my opinion, that's 100% skill and it prevents lockdowns from pressing into you or overplaying you. So, in my opinion, it's completely balanced for guards. For big men, if you don't follow the NBA 2K League or just Comp Prime in general, the Kobe jab step with bigs is absolutely brutally overpowered. If you don't know, standing dunks are very overpowered, and I'll go over that in a second. But... I can throw, my center was extremely good at it, meter Dan, I could throw it to him at like the free throw line, and he could jab step, and standing meter dunk from the free throw line, it was completely broken, so as a center, the Kobe jab step was absolutely overpowered, but as a guard, it punishes locks for playing me too close, so I think that's absolutely skill. Patty Mills and T-Mac base, oh, I can see people rolling their eyes already. Now, as a guard, I've played with both, I've played pretty much the entire year with both and I can say that I played completely different when I've got Patty Mills versus T-Mac. On my 6'6", six, six, I can't dribble as well as I can on my 6'4". Right here's a clip of my 6'4". I'm working to get open. It doesn't matter what jump shot I have right there, that's still going to go in. But I tell you what, man, I m made my channel. The reason I've got as many subscribers as I do is because I figured out that Green Machine's really overpowered. And hey, this, this T-Mac base is pretty overpowered too. So, some people call me T-Mac made. Um, so, I'll say Patty Mills. Some people play differently than I do. Uh, my little guard with Patty Mills, I try to get open. You can see in these clips, like, it doesn't matter what my jump shot is in these clips. This is still an open shot, no matter how you slice it. On my 6'6", however... I don't really care who's in front of me. That ball's going up if I've got Green Machine. If I've got badge, that thing's going up. So, and it goes in, you know. So, that's my opinion that Patty Mills, at least the way I play, is a lot of skill. Look, here's some more Patty. You know, I, I'm at least making an effort to get up. On my 6'6", that thing would have been gone up. And it would have been gone. And here's some T-Mac base for you. Boom! Right in his face. So... That's my opinion on those two jump shots, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section because, you know, I, I can hear arguments for both sides. Okay, guys, I'm just letting you know, I divorced my wife, I sold my car, I quit my job, uh, so I'm 100% locked into 2K. Like, I'm, I'm literally locked in. Like, I don't have a car. So, so please, I, I don't have a job, I don't have a car, so please hit that subscribe button. Please like the video. Uh, I promise you're going to like what you're... You're going to see in 2K25, and um, if you hit the subscribe button, uh, all your dreams are going to come true. So, um, okay. Next, you're going to go into all the finishing types of things. So, your floaters, your moving meter dunks, and your standing meter dunks. In my opinion, I think all three of these things take skill. Here's why. Everyone knows who Joe Knows is, right? You watching this definitely know who Joe is. Arguably the biggest guy in the 2K community, I would argue he is, you want to say he's in the top three, sure. No, no smaller um, than top three. Everyone wants to make Joe's build, everyone wants to five out, and everyone who does it in pro -Am loses. Everyone. I've played Joe like nine times this year. I'm one in eight versus Joe. I've played La Monster three or four times this year. Never lost to La Monster. I've played a million five-out teams this year. I, I truly, my record versus five-out teams is probably 98-2 or something like that. That might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but you know what I'm saying? 
rarely lose to five out teams. Rarely, if ever. But I always lose to Joe's team. Because Joe and everyone on that team is a nerd. And just like everyone in pro they study it really hard. I watched a stream, Joe played another five out team. Absolutely flooded him by like 50 points in the first half. And it's because they know how to stop the meter dunk and other people don't. There's still a skill gap to it. It's not like you can just meter dunk from the free throw line every time. It's not that simple. You gotta have a guy in the paint and high up in the paint so Joe gets a small meter. People don't realize that. So, what they did was they stuck Joe at, like, the free throw line, and then they had Swag X guy there. I'm sure you know who he is. He played, too, on his 95 swing, but he's got 7'4 wingspan. He can play too easy. So, now their guard has a three-point hunt, or their spot-ups have to hit these yellow blinder shots, and it's tough. It's really, really tough. Standing meter dunks. I play with a million centers who don't know how to do it. And they throw my assist away. I don't get badge. We lose the game by 20 because you can't dunk the ball and you keep doing standy layups and you keep getting blocked and you're 4 for 9 at the end of the game. There's absolutely a skill gap to it because I play with too many centers who don't know how to do it. Floaters, still a skill gap to it. Double H and Shadow, the two guys I think of when I think of floaters. It's not like they can just floater from the free throw line every time. They're still nerds about it. They still know when to do it. They're, they're still big in small meters. You still have to time it. It's not an automatic thing every time. Sometimes you get weird animations. There's absolutely a skill gap for all three of these things. I don't care what anyone says. Next, you're going into right stick rippering, steals, whatever you want to call it. And as a guard, I can confidently say that it still absolutely takes skill. Absolutely. I played on a hash with 91 steel. It's not like you can just run at guys with your right stick ripper and just you get the ball every time. Even with Hall of Fame glove and even with Hall of Fame right stick ripper, it's not that easy. You gotta time it, there's angles, there's you gotta reach when it, the ball's on your side. Right? Like right here, I just gotta steal with my 25 steal because I reach when he's doing the behind the back right into me. We're gonna talk about the behind the back in a little bit. So, there's still absolutely a skill gap to it. Yes, it was a little bit, you know, overpowered at times. There was games where, I mean, I literally couldn't do anything. Like, I'm dribbling away from this guy, and he's getting steals when he, the ball's on the complete opposite side of me. There's nothing you can do at that point, but look. There's 50-50 things that happen on both sides of the court, right? Like, sometimes an offensive rebound will go your way. Sometimes a tip pass will go your way. And sometimes things aren't going to go your way, and you're going to get plucked eight times a get game. And you just got to be okay with that, because at the end of the game, it's a video game. So 50-50 stuff isn't going to go your way all the time, so you just got to accept that. But yes, in my opinion, in the overall grand scheme of things, steals, right stick, ripper, all that stuff, as good as it was this year, it still absolutely took skill. All right, let's get into the big thing. L2 canceling and screens. In my opinion, nothing else in this game, in 2K24, takes more skill than L2 canceling and screens. Here's why. I play with so many idiot centers in pro -Am just playing 10s, in rack with randoms, even with my subs. There's some clips on my streams where it's like, holy moly, dude, how are you not slipping right here? There's eight people on me. Because some centers just think they can roll whenever when the, when their center hasn't stepped yet. Some centers hold the screen there when I'm getting triple teamed and don't roll, still trying to get me open. It's like, nah, bro, take your dunk. As a guard, I'm going against a lockdown with 99 steel and 99 perimeter defense, and then their back end defender, the guy guarding my center, has 95 steel. Who's got? So he's got Hall of Fame interceptor. They both got... They both got a Hall of Fame interceptor. They both got glove. They're running rotations out of the corner. So I have to get... I have to get past this guy with 99 steel, 99 perim, who makes a 300-pound lock. I got to get around him. Then I got to make a read. I got to hit the center. I got to shoot the shot, or I got to hit a corner or something like that. It's not easy. If you think it's easy, please, I invite you. Make yourself a 6'3 guard... Go into Prime next year, play some codes, and tell me how easy it is. 
Oh, Marauder, I don't want to play that way. That's not how I want to play the game. Oh, that's too easy. Oh, that's cheese. Exactly. You don't know how to do it. And look, you have the right to not want to play that way, and that's fine. If you want to play Rec, if you want to play Park, if you want to play 2v2, you have the right to do that. Don't call it cheese, though, because it's the most skilled thing in the game, in my opinion. If you've done it on a high level and have won tournaments and have won games against notable people, and you're like, no, nope, that was easy, I just walked into here and did it, be my guest, and you know what, you can be like, Marauder, yep, I just did it, you know, whatever, 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 but no one does it, because it's hard. Alright, last thing we're going to get into post-hooking, if you're, you know, a post-score, if you do post-hooks, like on the ones or twos, you're a bitch. That's cheese, it's a boring way to play the game, I mean, if you get enjoyment out of it, sure, you know, play ones and twos, I mean, that doesn't make you good at the game. To me, it's boring, but, you know, if you get a kick out of it. But, yeah, we're talking about skill, so it doesn't take skill. And, like I said, like, screw you. So, uh, that's all I got to say about that. All right, that's the end of the video. Let me know if I missed anything that you think is skill or cheese. Let me know what I'm wrong or right about. I am sure I've got a bunch of geniuses who are going to tell me I'm an idiot and that screens take no skill and that uh, meter dunking is super, super hard. And Joe's the best player ever. Look, Joe's a good player. But anyways, let me know what you thought about the video. Uh, let me know what you thought about all my things and what I missed, what I didn't miss, what I'm wrong about, what I'm right about. Ready for 2K25? Sub up if you're new. I love you all. Till next video. Peace out.